Hey guys, here we go into a film study of Regis Progray versus uh, Julius Sindango. And uh, first thing I want to talk about is there's there are a couple narratives in this fight. Uh, two main ones. One is that Julius Sindango fights on a rhythm, right? Um, where he's going back and forth, in and out. Um, and he has a hard time throwing punches when he's not on that rhythm. He can do it, and there are some examples in this video. Um, but for the most part, it's very easy to time him uh, because of that. And that's why um, Crawford was able to make it so look so easy because... You know, maybe where Julius Ndongo comes from, the like where the competition isn't as stiff, there just isn't as many people that have this kind of style or that have seen this kind of style to really exploit it. Um, whereas in the American amateurs, you know, I fought, you know, I would train with people, I would spar with people that had a, a kind of an in-and-out style, and they were the easiest to fight uh, because I was trained to fight with an in-and-out style too, so it's really easy to time them. Um, it's, it's a really, really difficult fighting style to have craft with. Um, because you're, it's so easy for your opponent to to take advantage of it. You know, you really gotta you really gotta have a lot of reps with it, a lot of experience, uh, fight a lot of rounds to kind of figure out how to how to take advantage of the things that your opponent is going to take advantage of. You know, and um, that's going to be the basis of this video is traps. Um, and we're not going to be explicitly talking about Julius and Dango's traps. We're going to be talking about Regis Progray's traps. Um, and not only how they were on the in and out style, which I'm not going to really talk about past this point, but how they were on uh, Regis Progray's um, his style walking forward. Um, now, one of the problems that um, Progray has is the, when he walks forward, and this is very unconventional, um, it's fine when he fights orthodox fighters because the way that he moves moves his head off the line and out of the trajectory of a straight right hand from his opponent but in a southpaw uh, when he's fighting a southpaw uh, it's the same problem that Sergey Lipinets had against Mikey Garcia is when he moves his head in that direction he moves it right into the line of the the straight right hand right Lipinets kind of has that that faux shoulder roll kind of thing where but he he the the hand comes and he only bends down and moves his leg his head over his right leg right he doesn't turn his shoulders at all or lift his shoulder right because he wants to keep his his uh right hand in position to throw a punch right so he's not rotating his shoulders uh, which also as you i don't know if you can see it but it how it changes the death perception right or my head moves right when you when you move your shoulder it moves your head off the line right if the right hand is coming this way into my face when i move my shoulder now the right hand is coming this way it's going to move past or it's going to come into contact with my shoulder right um and you're able to kind of glide it away and both of these fighters kind of had um problems uh shoulder rolling in spite of the fact that they were using a faux shoulder roll style you know and progray is not doing it on purpose uh i think his is only because most of his craft is built on fighting left-handed fighter or right-handed fighters um where that right hand is coming this way right and when he dips down this way and steps forward right his head is moving completely off the line and away from that shot he's even getting his shoulder out of the way right but we're going to kind of talk about that as we go through let me put this in slow-mo um, I made this video last night, but it got caught for, like, uh, bullshit copyright stuff that I don't want to fight um, just because it takes forever and I'll never get the video up in time. But, um, so we're going to go ahead and go. We're going to go a little a little slow. But um, as you can see right here, uh, program when he comes forward, watch this motion. This is very important for the fight. So he dips to the right, right? And this is the inside of Indongo. I might mix it up a few times just because I'm talking, right? I'm not really watching. I've watched the clips already. Um... So I might get like left hand, right hand, um, you know, inside, outside mixed up, um, but just pay attention. And then now after that, he dips to his left, right, which is the outside. So he dips to the inside, right? He gets fainted and then dips to the to the outside of Indongo, right, towards Indongo's back, right? So he dips to the outside and Indongo sees that, right? When he flashes the lead hand, he knows where where uh, Progray is going to move, right? Also, when he when he steps forward with his left leg, right? Watch him step forward with the left leg and then dip to the outside of Indango, right? That's exactly the same problem. Um, even though Lipinets wasn't having that problem moving forward, he winds up doing the same motion, right? Um, and this is a fundamental flaw because you want to have your weight on your front leg when you're stepping forward. Right now he's dispersing his weight, right? And he could come back with the shot, but it's going to take a long time because he's really committing to this motion. He's stretching his weight too far out, right? And now he steps forward here and he gets fainted, right? And what does he do when he gets fainted? He dips down to his to the outside of Indango and Indango is able to walk him into that right hand, right? And then move off the line. 
right? And this is the first, that was the first few seconds of the fight. Um, there are a lot of examples of it. And sorry for getting the head cut off a little bit. Don't worry about that. Uh, but look at his shoulders, right? How he comes forward, right? Dips to the out, to the inside, right? And then he starts coming forward, and then dips to the in, to the outside, dips to the inside. And then when Indongo goes first, right? When he waits for Indongo to go first, and Indongo doesn't use a feint, right? He just commits to the jab. Um, he's very easily able to get out of it with this with this uh, this tactic, which makes him feel more. Um, more confidence in it that it's the right way right notice how he dips all the way down to get away from it but in the, in this next scene oh bam he gets caught with that shot and let's watch that again uh this is a, this is a pattern that he had a lot through the fight this is kind of how he moves forward when he's shuffling forward right boom boom and we're gonna watch his shoulder he dips to the inside right and then look at how his feet come together right and now he's gonna step with his front leg and then he puts his he ducks down right to the outside of Indongo, and then boom, right into the right hand, right? And it's a fundamental flaw, and that's why you don't want to put your feet together, right? Uh, you always want to be pivoting when you move. In theory, it's very difficult. It takes, I don't want to say it takes a lot of energy, right? But you've, you've constantly got to be mindful of it, and sometimes people shortcut stuff, like moving into the ring, right? Or moving forward in the ring. Like, a lot of fighters will do uh, what Canelo Alvarez does when he moves forward, right? He'll lean forward, put all his weight on his front leg, and then he'll just throw a jab, right? And that's the, the rhythm when he throws his jab on, boom, right? And he'll just pop, shoot the jab out there, and then shuffle forward to throw a right hand, right? Um, and that was why Glovkin was able to time him in the early rounds of the fight and land a decent amount of jabs against Canelo because it was a very easy timing. It's also something that David Lemieux used, um, and then Golovkin destroyed Lemieux because of it. Uh, Lemieux tried to make some... Uh, some um, some adjustments. Golovkin or uh, Canelo made some great adjustments. Very smart fighter. Um, and if you watch that video, it's called Timing. It's on my channel. Um, I talk about how he destroyed Golovkin with it and how he would use those techniques against Canelo. Um, and then I do a couple breakdowns of the first few rounds of the Canelo fight um, with Golovkin. Um, and he does use that. It's this really interesting battle where. Um, where Golovkin is timing him on that spot, right? When he would step forward and then, you know, Canelo would do a good job of like blocking the shots or moving, right? But he was like, what's going on? You know, why has he got this great timing on me? And then he would start in the second round, he would start setting traps for that timing. I think he even started in the first round. He would start setting traps for that timing, right? So he would step in this way, Golovkin, he knew Golovkin was gonna throw a punch and he would slip and throw a right hand or slip and throw a left hook or slip and throw his own shot, but he was baiting that, that timing. I'm sorry I'm getting on a tangent. But then the next round, Golovkin was setting traps for the traps that Canelo was setting. You know, it was beautiful boxing, like really amazing stuff if you want to check it out. But anyway, back to the pro gray stuff. Um, so he shuffles forward, boom, shuffles forward with his footsteps, right? And then walks into the right hand because of this motion um, and this this timing that um, that Indongo has on him. And, you know, and Indongo's a very good fighter, very smart. He just needs someone better to coach him and teach him boxing. Um, Coming forward, again, when he takes that step, he's able to walk him into that right hand. And Progre, at this point, he's going to start making some adjustments, right? So now he's, when he steps with that, um, whoops. Okay, so now he steps with that step. And notice he doesn't dip down like this, right? He's trying to keep his head up, and he's trying not to fall out of position into those right hands from... Um, uh, from Indongo, but now he's getting stuck with the jab, right? And this is going to be very important later, right? But notice how he stays up this time. And he doesn't duck down, right? But he's going to make some adjustments. Now he steps and he moves to the outside. And look at how he's able to get away from that jab. He doesn't walk into that jab of Indongo, right? Now he does uh, dip down after, right? Um, good defensive responsibility. He understands that he missed the jab. The right hand might be coming after. Dips to his right this time when he's walking forward and not dipping down onto his left, right? And boom, look at how he's able to shuffle right there, right, and get away from that right hand. So let's watch it again. Boop, dips. And now Indongo expects him to dip down to the left, right, but he doesn't. He kind of shoots that jab to the body, you know, making an adjustment. Uh, Indongo also makes a good adjustment, throwing punches in combination, kind of catches him with that left hook. But let's go ahead and see where it goes from here. Oh, man. So the very next clip, right? He knows that he's getting timed on that front foot, right? So when he takes that step, he's expecting a jab, and Indongo's on that in-and-out style, so he can see it coming, right? So he tries to slip and get under that jab and throw a right hand over the top, but Indongo, boom. Indongo uses, like, good head movement and is able to get under that shot 
um, as it comes. Otherwise, it would have been a great shot and a great adjustment from uh, Regis, right? Trying to get under that um, that right hand and not walk into the not walk into the right hand, even though he winds up getting hit with both shots, right? Next clip, um, he takes a step, right? Sorry for going back so far, um, but the next clip. He's on that left leg, right? And notice how he takes a small step right here, right? He sees that Ndongo's on the in and out style, right? He can time him, right? And he sees that jab is coming. And he's able to slip it, get under it, you know, just a little, and then kind of take a long step forward and land a jab to the body, right? And I didn't really catch if it landed, right? But it's just how he's getting under it. He's making adjustments. That's the important part, right? Don't say in the comments whether he lands it. It's not important. Please, oh goodness. I know I'm asking for it by saying don't, but anyway. Boom, again, right? Getting caught with that same timing, right? And this is really interesting. So watch how he dips to his right, and then he dips to his left, right? So he goes boom, and then he makes that dip so he can step forward and gets caught right there on the chin. Let's just watch it again one more time because I, I want to make sure I'm, I know what I'm talking about, but dips, and then he steps forward with that right leg, and as he does it, he moves down and walks right into that right hand, right? That's the same timing that Ndongo is trying to get on him. Now he... Boom, look at the adjustment that he makes right here, right? So uh, Progray has figured out that he's getting timed on that lead left leg. He knows it's coming. He knows the punches are coming, right? So he steps forward, right? And then feints like he's going to take another step in, right? Just like he shot that jab to the body. Boom, and he pulls back to get away from that shot. But Indongo does make a good adjustment again, punching in combination, kind of grazes him with that left uppercut thingy. And then Progre finds out that Indongo is having trouble moving backwards and punching at the same time because he has to really set himself. He kind of gets him off balance really easily. Boom. Now, again, right, the in and out style from Indongo. He comes forward, right, and he can tell that Indongo is going to set up a punch, right. And this time, instead of uh, slipping the jab like he has been, right, Indongo sets him up with an up with a, a left hook instead, right. But Progray can see it coming, right. It's very easy to time Indongo, and he's able to read the punch really well as well, uh, and know that the punch is coming on that same timing uh, and close the distance. Um, this is at the point where he's. You know, and he's setting, you know, it's he didn't land a punch, right? But getting, being able to close the distance on Indongo because Indongo is setting traps for that timing, right, is very important. Oh, now this is beautiful. I don't know if you guys caught this in live, right? But remember, um, watch that lead foot, right? So he lands that body shot. Now he's, he's going to step with this lead foot, right? And now, usually when he steps with this lead foot, he dips to the left, right? So he starts stepping, right? And look at how he all, he, he, he kind of feints it a little bit, and then he immediately shifts his head to the right, and look at, watch that left arm, right? Boom, he was going to try to set him up for that straight left hand over the top. Boom. And he still does a little bit, right? But it's kind of delayed because he's already out of position, but let's just watch it again, right? And he kind of feints him, and because Indongo can't fight going backwards, right, he winds up being really off balance and gets caught with that left hand anyway. But a great adjustment and a great awareness from Progray, understanding that he's really getting pieced up on that timing. Um, anyway, we're only halfway through the fight, so I'm going to kind of let this play a little bit. Again, really easy to time. I know I just said that shit, damn it. Really easy to time Ndongo because Ndongo has to set himself to punch. So he's able to slip that shot and then land a great body shot right here. Um, and they kind of wrestle a little bit. You know, he lands that body shot and then there's the first knockdown or whatever. But um, boom, right here, right at the beginning of the next round, right? Beautiful boxing from Progray. He slips to the outside, right? And then... Uh, Indongo tries to time him, slip to the outside, and then step with the inside, right? Or slip to the inside, right? And then step um, with his right leg and slip to the outside, right? And Indongo tries to time him with that, but he ducks the shot and lands a shot, like, right to the chest. And then throws a combination, and again, Indongo has a hard time moving backwards, falls off balance again. Um, the next clip... He knows he's getting timed, right? So he's going to start fainting, right? So he faints on that right leg, right? Then he pulls back. What was their counter? Then he shifts to the inside, faints again, right? Thinking that that's going to be the timing. Remember, he shifts this way, and then he steps this way, right? And puts his head to the outside of Ndongo. And Ndongo's been throwing a lot of punches right there. But now Ndongo doesn't feel super comfortable. But watch what Ndongo does here, right? Really interesting. He's going to make his own traps, right? So... Uh, Progre does find a way to get under that jab when he steps with that lead leg, right? Um, Progre uh, is getting timed again, right? But he slips that shot, shoots his jab, 
But watch what Ndongo follows up with, right? He takes that half a step back and tries to catch him with that left hook, right? And that's because of this scene right here, right? Pro Gray pushing forward with that jab, boom, and then he takes another small step right here and throws that combination and puts him off balance, right? So now when that stuff is coming, Ndongo's already made an adjustment, right? Boom, take that half a step back, and he comes with this right hook, right? We'll see where he goes with that in a second, right? Controlling him with the lead hand, Boom, faints him, moving back, moving back. And this is like one continuous clip from the fight. Now he faints him. Oh, man, just we'll watch it again, right? So watch um, Pro Gray's lead leg, right? So right here. He's taking a step, right? He's taking a step with his lead leg. Usually he'll duck down, right, or he'll come with the jab, right? And Indongo faints him with the lead hand, and uh, Pro Gray ducks down, and then he starts taking a second jab and a, taking a second step, right, and walks right into this left hook of Indongo. Now, it's not a super clean punch, right? It's the first time he's landing it, but he set this up off of Pro Gray's rhythm and how Pro Gray was making adjustments to the, to the tactics that, um, that uh, Indongo was using in the fight, and he winds up piecing him up with the combination right there. Beautiful boxing from Indongo. Very smart fighter, you guys. Very underrated. Again, the same combination. Um, I, don't, I have that clip in there on accident twice. But um, the next, the immediately slips to the inside uh, and then rolls to the outside, comes forward with that jab, and then takes a step back knowing that that right hook is coming this time, right? So Progray already making an adjustment. Coming forward, ducking all the way down, getting away from it. And the reason he's able to get away from it this time is because he's taking a small step right here, sorry takes a small step and Dango faints him right instead of committing to the first shot right with a jab right and Progre reads it really well and gets under it um, now Progre tries to follow him backwards right because he has figured out that he doesn't fight very well backwards but Ndongo's already been able to reset himself right here and catches him reaching and pieces him up with that uppercut boom now one of the reasons this is so bad for him not only does he put his head down really far but look at how far he stretches his weight right watch his watch his back leg and watch his hips right now Boom, look at how he off balance he is and how his back leg can't even find a place to, to rest, right? Because his right leg, um, because of the way that he, he plants his right leg when he's shooting that jab, right? And he winds up getting pieced up. You know, it's probably a worthwhile trade for him to land that body shot against Ndongo because Ndongo's not the greatest puncher, right? But anyway, um, only two rounds of this and then we're at 17 minutes. That's how dense this fight is. Um, there's just so much action going in, but stepping on that lead right leg, right, shifting. Now, I love this right here, right? So, not this right here, right here. So he slips, right, slip to the inside, right, and then slip to the outside, takes a small step, but he's fainting, right? See how he faints like that, like he's gonna shoot a shot? He understands that this is the timing that Ndongo was looking for, right? So he kind of uses it, he kind of tries to use it to bait him into something, but then he does wind up getting walking into something else. When he shuffles forward, right, and moves, takes himself out of position to punch, and Ndongo flashes that lead hand, right? Remember the other time where he was just taking a small step and doing it, he was able to get it completely away from the right hand. This time he's shuffling forward, right, so that he can move the lead leg forward and winds up walking right into a right hand, you know? And that's, again, that's a fundamental flaw because of the fact that he probably spends all his time training against right-handers, doesn't have a lot of experience against left-handers. Um, right there. Whoops. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. Whatever. But good job right there getting under this. So he gets fainted, right? He's on that same um, that same slip to the outside, right? And this time he stays back knowing that the counters might be coming, knowing that Indongo's timing him on it. And now when he's stepping with that lead leg, right, uh, he takes a long step right there and kind of ducks the shot. But notice also that he doesn't dip down to his, his right in this time, right? He keeps his head basically on the line, right? But just leans forward instead of leaning this way, right? Still bending at the waist, but making it so that Ndongo can't really land that shot. Probing, right? And watch these probes, right? What, is, what, is, um, what does Prograde do when he sees this shot? Nothing, right? comes forward he doesn't bend down right he's more bending forward right because he doesn't want to get caught with that uppercut again he doesn't want to get caught with that right hand or that straight left hand right now in the next scene Indongo has already picked up on the fact that he's not moving his head anymore he doesn't want to right and just throws a straight one two right at him catches them again look at how he walks forward he's not dipping down this time he's just walking forward right 
and not moving into that timing and Ndongo still able to to take advantage of it right um, moving on coming forward dips to the outs or to the inside right and then when he starts dipping to the inside or the outside again and Dongo's able to walk him into that shot so Progre having a real difficult time finding a way to close the distance against his opponent right and we'll see where he goes from there again right he doesn't know if he can dip to the to the outside right when he does dip to the outside when he takes that step forward right the right hook comes right he's having a very difficult time moving forward closing the distance against Indango boom now this is really sweet too right so changing the rhythm on him so he steps forward on that lead leg right and then takes a, a sharp step breaking that rhythm and slipping the jab right this time instead of taking that one long step he takes a small step first right to test the waters and then closes the distance by stretching out and shooting that jab right there very smart now this is like probably my one of my favorite ones right here so again right oh uh, not this scene but now he's not again he's not dipping to the right anymore he's just shuffling forward but when he shuffles forward this time he doesn't put his head down uh, over his left leg right he's just coming forward right and it makes it very difficult for uh, in Dongo to time him so he feels comfortable just shooting a jab and closing the distance and again this is exactly where he wants to be is on the inside right at all costs right because in Dongo's so long so lean you know uh, and can punch from so far away but uh, this is I love this right here so he steps forward right and notice he's on that same rhythm right when he takes that long step usually he slips to the outside of Indongo towards Indongo's back but this time he slips to the inside and he's able to roll that jab really easily and easily get away from it and when he comes up boom he's able to land that left hand because Indongo can't punch going backwards right it's part part of the problem with that in and out style when he comes back right all his weight is supplanted on his back leg and he has no balance right um, probably because he's not transitioning his weight very well and he doesn't know how to quickly transition his weight back to his lead leg right just fundamentally a lot of issues right but it's something that Indongo is not going to be able to fix during the course of this round and he winds up getting caught with that shot right there um, I think this is a part of the same clip but oh man this is beautiful I love this right here so he comes forward right and he knows that that timing is coming right so he steps he he uh, uh, slips to the in, to the inside of Indongo right and then he goes to slip to the outside take a step right and Indongo knows that usually when he does this he goes boom and then he takes that long step and dips all the way down to his his left right and this time he does it and he keeps his head on the line and instead of moving all the way to the left right right into the path of Indongo's straight left hand he slips right and comes straight in with the jab and is able to close the distance right here and just start landing some great body shots and that one didn't look the greatest right there but it's not important um, and again right after actually it does look pretty good he's able to get under that right hand or that left hand because he knows it's coming off that timing when he takes that long step uh, and continue closing the distance so he can land some body shots and fight on the inside you know some really great stuff now this is actually my favorite part of it right um, he's here he's on the outside right now he has to work his way back in right so he slips to the outs to the inside then he goes to fake like he's slipping to the inside or to the outside Jesus <laughs> Let's just go back real quick so I don't mess this up. <laughs> uh, so he's on the outside again, and he has to work his way back in. So he slips to the inside, then he slips to the outside, right? So he can take that step, and Indongo thinks he's going to slip all the way to the outside, right? So he shoots that jab, right? And he baits him into shooting that jab so that he can counter over the top of his left hand. Let's just watch that one more time. Just beautiful work from Progre right here. Slip to the out inside, fake slip to the inside, baits the jab, and lands the great straight left hand right there. Um, that's the end of this clip right here, but I've got one more to kind of show. Um, and it's the actual, the actual like hardest hard punch of the fight, right, where he knocks him down. So again, he's on the outside. He's going to take a step with his right leg, and he's going to slip the jab, and he's going to throw that left hand over the top, just like he did a second ago, right? But he's he's going to bait that jab from Indongo by taking that step first and lands that big shot right there. So he takes that step, slips the jab, and lands the knockout punch right there. Beautiful boxing from Progre. Some great adjustments, right? Um... And even though like there were a lot of awkward moments in this fight where he was getting hit with some good shots, um, don't forget, you know, it, it's easy to forget how good Ndongo is because Crawford smashed him. You know, Crawford made him look like an amateur, and he made a lot of amateur mistakes, right? But how many amateur fights does this guy have? How many professional fights does he have? You know, what kind of 
um, experience does he have fighting? You know, he, you really got to take into consideration how good this guy is for the limited amount of experience that he has um, and how smart he is, how he was able to make adjustments and make traps, right, against um, Pro Gray during the course of these first few rounds. Um, anyway, uh, now, now that that part's over, I kind of want to talk about something else real quick. Um, now, this is, this is something like, so we got to watch this fight, right? And you get to see like how entertaining it was, how fun it was. And then you get to see Pro Gray get pieced up a little bit. And then you get to see Ndongo get knocked out. And I kind of want to connect this idea, right? Because what can both of these fighters do better, right? Now, Pro Gray won. So we're not going to talk about what he can do better, but we're going to talk about what Julius Ndongo can do better, aside from just not ditching the in-and-out style, right? Um, but controlling the space between him and his opponent, right? And that's the thing that he, he most needed to work on, right? He had a trap, and he had something that was working for him in, in the ability to land punches, um, but he wasn't able to really stop Pro Gray from coming in on him right or slow him down enough even though he had the ability to land offense right um it wound up being very predictable because it was trap based right and and, and uh Progre was able to learn from that but one of the problems that he has is that he only controls the space right with that in and out style a little bit right but with his jab right when he shoots the jab he can feint the jab right but this is his feint right kind of like a hook style but flashing it right and then he can land that shot um or just a straight up jab, which I think he shoots right here, right? So he's bouncing, bouncing, shoots that jab, and he commits to it, right? Which could get him in trouble. Um, which does get him in trouble, i.e. right here. He shoots that jab because Pro Gray's too close, and he's trying to control the space between him and his opponent and gets caught with that huge right hand, right? It's not just a fundamental of him... Um, uh, punching on that timing the, he, the reason he's punching on that timing right now in this in the knockout scene is because he's trying to control Progre and control the distance between him and stop Progre from being able to land punches right but going back to to this that's one of the problems that that Indongo has is that he only knows how to control the space with his lead hand right he doesn't know how to feint properly he doesn't know how to probe right and he does do a little bit of probing let's see if I can find it is it right here? No, it's not here. It's right here, right? So he's coming forward, and he shoots. Look at how he uses that lead hand. Like, this is brilliant. Notice how in all the rest of the clips, when when Ndongo's on the back foot, right? And if you rewatch the fight, this is a very common theme, too. Pro Gray just runs at him, right? He just chases him down to get close, right? But right here, he's able to shoot that probing jab and keep the distance. Look at how far away Pro Gray is from from Indongo after that jab, right? And it's not a real jab, right? He's just probing it out there and he takes that step back. And then Progre commits to two jabs, right? And is not in position to land either, right? But he wants to control the distance. And then um and then Indongo uses this little probing jab and just sticks it out there. And look at how he stops Progre right in his tracks, right? And that's just the psychological effect that having someone stick their glove in front of your face has on you. Not only is it blinding you and it's doing all of the physical stuff, right? Oh, you think it's a punch, right? You're like, oh, shit, maybe the left hand's coming. Oh, oh, uh, 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 you know, I got to do this, I got to do that, right? But it has a psychological effect on you to, to make you think that another punch is coming, right? And look at how effective that is, right? From how, how much pressure Progre is putting on him right here. Boom, he just cracks him with that shot, right? Pressing forward, getting fainted, slipping, trying to slip that shot faint getting under that shot gets caught with that punch still coming forward right coming forward coming forward and then boom completely breaks his rhythm right just by sticking his glove in his face right and that's the reason why you need to control the space between you and your opponent with something other than a punch um and if you go back and you watch my julius and dango films not julius and dango um my sergey kovalev um shabransky fight uh breakdown um, the post-fight one, you'll see that Shabransky only has one way to control the space. Now, I'm not talking about maintain distance, right? A lot of people think you want to 
control the distance, right, by having your opponents basically always like at the tip of your punches, right? So in theory, if you have an 80 inch reach and your opponent has a 75 inch reach, as long as you keep them at that inch, that range, there's five inches of punching space that you have, where if you had lightning fast punches, you could just be constantly going like this, ha ha ha, look, you can't get into me, right? But that's not what it is. It's not, that's, that's not controlling the space or controlling the distance. Controlling the space between you is the space that your opponent uses to feint, probe, and use head movement to set their punches up. That's all the space that they use to get you out of position so that they can land punches against you, right? And this kind of harkens back to this part right here, right? So right now, neither one of them have control, right? And when he shoots that jab, right, he's setting up his next punch, right? And he gets prograde to dip down to the right or to the left, right? And then in the next sequence, right? When he actually does shoot his punches, right? He's got that information because he was close enough to punch. Now he's flashing this lead hand and he can walk him into this, this straight left hand, right? And that's because of the fact that um, Progre isn't fainting right now. He isn't shooting his jab. He isn't probing, right? And he's allowing um, Indongo to use the space between them to faint, right? Because Indongo, because neither one of them have control of the space, Whoever throws a punch or throws the first feint or takes the first step forward, they get to see how their opponent reacts, right? And it's not about maintaining the distance, right? I know a lot of fighters, they say that because they don't know what they're talking about. I promise you they don't, right? A lot of coaches say that. It's a misnomer. It's not, it's, it's not said in the correct way, right? Um, but what you want to do is you want to control that space. You want to control your opponent inside that space so that they don't faint you, so that they don't use their head movement to set their punches up, so they don't, um, so they don't do this to you. Let's go back here. So they don't do this to you, right? Right. So Ndongo has his hands by himself, right? So what happens? Whoops, go back. So Ndongo has his hands right here, and he's not fainting or probing, right? He doesn't have any control over... Um, over uh, Regis. So what does Regis do? He's He knows that no punches are coming. He knows that he doesn't have to worry about anything except for when he steps on that lead leg or he does this timing, right? Because all of the offense from Indongo is trap-based, he's not controlling the space between them. Uh, that allows um, Regis Progre to faint right here, right? Slip to the inside right and now in dongo in his mind he says this is my opportunity to punch right he slipped to the inside now he's going to slip to the outside and step forward right so he does that and he's able to bait that jab and land that straight left hand the one that, that in my opinion also hurt him um but this is because of the fact that julius and dongo is not controlling the space between them because he's not fainting he's not probing uh he's also not moving off the line right in this instance um he allows Regis Progre to set that shot up because he's not controlling it, right? And Regis Progre is like, oh, cool, you know, nothing's there. Oh, here, let me show you this little technique that you keep countering me on. Uh, and he gives it to him beautifully, right? And that would be prevented if Regis Progre had to think about a punch coming into his face, if he had to think about a probe or a right hand coming or a straight left hand coming, right? Or the right hook, right? Um, but because he's not controlling the space and the only way he has to control the space is with his jab. And again, this works twofold, right? Not only is that is the way that, that Ndongo controlling the space only with his jab, right? With a con committed punch, right? Which works exactly for, uh, for what Progre wants, right? Um, he's not actively using it, right? So this, the parallels between this and the Shabransky fight um, are, are nearly identical, the only the only problem that Progre had to, had was getting him to commit to the jab, right? Um, now, while he did set these punches up really well and set these traps up really well based on the timing that um, that Indongo was setting him up on for his own timing, um, it could all be avoided if he was probing instead, right? So now, say say in this instance, right here, Indongo right fainted him, right? He fainted him. Now he'd be able to see this right hand, this straight left hand coming, right? And he could get under it. But because he controls the space with his punches, right, uh, he winds up walking into it. Anyway, I hope that made sense. It's like a 10-minute rant, um, and I'm still not sure that I said it in the most appropriate way. But um, if you have any questions about what I said, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll, I'll do my best to... to um, 
to address them. I would suggest going to watch the Sergey Kovalev Shabransky fight video. I think it's pretty short, um, and it kind of details the the knockout. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks, guys.